Okay, uh, for this video, I'll be discussing uh, NSTP CWTS Module 1 and 1 to 3. So let us start with Module 1. This is NSTP CWTS History and Orientation. So what is the constitutional basis of NSTP? So you have the Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution, which provides that the prime duty of the government is to serve and protect the people. The government may call upon the people to defend the state, and in fulfillment thereof, all citizens may be required, under conditions provided by law, to render personal, military, and civil service. And that is why we have NSTP. Okay? Now, illustration number one. Mr. Jeff is a member of LGBTQIA. He refuses to undergo NSTP training because it violates his freedom of expression and it's a form of involuntary servitude, which is guaranteed by the Constitution. Is Mr. Jeff claim valid? Well, the answer is no. Because under the, under the Constitution, the government may require its citizens to render personal, military, and civil service. So that is why you cannot object. No? Uh, you are required to render personal, military, and civil service. That is why we have NSTP. On another case, Mr. Philip is a member of Jehovah's Witness. He also objected uh, the NSCP training for violation of his right to freedom of religion. So, this time his claim is, or he, the uh, Philip invoked freedom of religion. Okay? And is his claim valid? Well, um, the answer is yes. Because the Constitution regarded the freedom of religion as the highest priority. So, we can excuse, no? Jehovah's Witness may be excused from attending NSTP program. Suppose uh, a country attacked the Philippines and Congress declared state of war. How can the Philippine, uh, can the Philippine government require its citizens to render military service? Okay? So, if the Philippines is attacked and we are now in state of war, uh, can the Philippine government require citizens to render military service? The answer is yes. Because the Constitution provides that the government may call upon the people. Because this is symbiotic relationship. No? Um, the government may require the people to render uh, military service in event of war, invasion, or rebellion. Then, during a state of war, Mark, a member of a religious congregation that prohibits his member uh, to render military service, objected in joining the military. Is his claim valid? Now again, no, uh, this time is also invoking uh, freedom for religion. The answer here will be yes, because the Constitution exempted a person from joining military by reason of religion. Okay? religion. Again, uh, religion is one of the highest, in the hierarchy of rights, religion is in the uh, pedestal or in the high, highest no, position. Now, what if during the state of war, John supported the enemy by giving them aid of comfort? So, there is a war and John supported the enemy by giving them aid of comfort. Is he criminally liable? The answer is yes. Because, uh, yes, with treason. Treason means breach of loyalty to the Philippines for agreeing to the enemy. So, that's treason, no? um, breach of loyalty. So, again, now what are the three components of NSTP? You have ROTC, CWTS, and LTS. Now, if you finish ROTC, you will become the reservist of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. You will be form part of the AFP Reserve Force. You will become reservist of the Armed Forces of the Philippines with the Army, Air Force, or Navy. If you are a graduate of CWTS and LTS, you will be a reservist of the National Service Reserve Corps, NSRC. Uh, NSRC. So, that's the... Uh, Two phases of implementation, uh, the training phase and the service phase. This one, the training phase and the service phase. Now, let's go to module two, and that is citizenship training. So, who are citizens of the Philippines? Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of adoption of the Constitution. So, if you are a uh, Filipino citizen of the adoption of this Constitution, you are considered a uh, citizen of the Philippines. Those whose father or mother are citizens of the Philippines. So, automatic, if your father is a Filipino, you are also Filipino. Your mother is a Filipino, then you are also a Filipino. Okay? Um, but, 
uh, the only problem here is this one. Uh, those born before January 17, 1973. So, take note of this. January 17, 1973. And if you are born with a Filipino mother, you need to elect Philippine citizenship. Okay? So, if you are born before January 17, 1973, and you are, your mother is Filipino, then you need to elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. I think we have your illustration. Okay. Example, this one. Nick. Nick, whose father is American. Mother is Filipino. So, pasok siya sa requirement. Born before January 17, 1973. Who elect Philippine citizenship under reaching the age of majority. Is he Filipino? Yes. But in this one, another case, Oscar, whose father is Filipino. Mother is an American. Born before January 17, 1970, who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. Is he Filipino? No. Why not? Because his father is a Filipino and his mother is an American. So, if you're born before 1973, what is important reckoning point here is your mother is a Filipino. So, uh, what multiple is citizen, uh, citizen will win? Nick would be the one. Okay? Now, uh, in the case of Grace Po, uh, there was question of her citizenship because she is a foundling. Uh, when you see foundling, um, Akita lang, no? Nakita. He was left in the, um, one of the church in Iloilo. So, can we consider a foundling? Anyone abandoned child, a Filipino? Well, according to the Supreme Court, foundling in the Philippines has 99% probability born to a Filipino parents. Otherwise, it will be in the height of discrimination. That is why Grace Po was allowed to run as president in 2016 presidential election. Because foundling, abandoned child, uh, are considered Filipino. Right to suffrage. We see suffrage, this is a right to vote and to be voted for in public office. Suffrage may be exercised by all citizens of the Philippines, not otherwise disqualified by law. Or at least 18, so age of um, um, votation is 18 years of age. Resident in the Philippines for at least one year. And a place where they're supposed to vote for at least six months immediately preceding the election. No literacy, property, or other substantive requirements shall be imposed. When you see literacy, even if you cannot read, you cannot write, you can still vote. Because literacy is not a requirement for voting. So, how many people can vote during election? Mr. X is a Filipino Chinese, Filipino Chinese, residing in the Philippines for more than 30 years, registered voter in the Philippines where he intended to vote. Nonetheless, he is an illiterate person who cannot read and write. Can he vote? Actually, yes, because he's Filipino-Chinese, okay? But Mr. Y is a Chinese businessman who resided in the Philippines for more than 50 years. Okay, resident lang siya, but he is not a Filipino citizen. Hindi siya pwede. Mr. C is a Filipino businessman who resided in the Philippines for more than 4 years. Nonetheless, he did not register due to conflict of schedule. He failed to register. He cannot also vote. Mr. A is a Filipino soldier assigned in Hulu Sulu but registered in Cebu City. Nonetheless, he failed to notify the COMELEC he wants to avail the absentee voting, so he cannot still vote because he did not notify the COMELEC on absentee voting. So, here, allowed to vote is Mr. X. Uh, even if he's literate, Filipino-Chinese, he's resident and registered voter, then he is allowed to vote. Now, let's go to Republic Act 8491 of the flag and the relic code of the Philippines. Our constitution provides the flag of the Philippines shall, remember this term, shall be red, white, and blue, with sun and three stars, as concentrated honored by the people and recognized by law. The Congress may adopt new name for the country, national anthem, and national seal, which shall be totally reflective and symbolic of ideals, history, and tradition of the Philippines. Now, what's the difference between the two? This is this one is you shall, meaning to say, we cannot change the flag of the Philippines. Congress Senators and congressmen cannot change the flag. It must be red, white, and blue. But can Congress change or amend or the name of the country, the national anthem, or national scene? The answer is yes. Pwede. Okay? So, uh, question, can the Congress enact law changing the Philippine flag? The answer is no. Because the Constitution uses the term shall, which is mandatory. Therefore, you cannot change the flag of the Philippines without changing the Constitution. Can the Congress enact law amending national anthem, the Lupang Hinirang? This time, yes, because the Constitution allows Congress to pass a law changing our national 
on them. Pwede yun. Now, which, uh, this is proper dispo, uh, displaying plug. No? If the it is vertical displayed, you notice the red is in your right. Facing the uh, facing the plug, facing the observer, red, right. Now, the blue is in your left. Uh, because in the blue, there's L, no? so left. Red, right. Okay? But sa coffin, coffin, no? ang left sa dead body, left sa dead body is red. Right sa dead body is blue. Okay? Sa half mass, it must be lower up first, then before it's lower down. Now, that's half mass. No? Now, let's go to drug abuse education. It's in module 3. So, I know, this is the most abused drug in the Philippines. We have metapitamine hydrochloride or shabu. We have cannabis sativa L or marijuana. We have cocaine and we have ecstasy. Now, our primary law on drug addiction or uh, drug control is the RA9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs as of 2002. The question is, can the school require its students to undergo drug testing? Well, according to the Supreme Court, Yes, the school can require the, the student to undergo drug testing. Because the moment the student enters the school premises, he is waiving his right to privacy. Okay, the moment the student enters the school premises. Now, so these are the most common um, crimes no, on um, dangerous drugs. No? Importation, or bringing shabu to the Philippines, or bringing drugs to the Philippines, importation. Selling, you are uh, trafficking, selling, possession, you are in possession of drugs, and of course, using. So, these are the most um, violated provision of 9165. For example, no, police planet Luffy received information that certain Yusuf is a member of Straw Hat Gang selling Shabu and marijuana. SPO1 Soro and PO3 Sanji were instructed to conduct surveillance and bypass operation against Yusuf. On February 5, 2020, the two acted as for sure buyer, purchased from Yusuf sheeted plastic sachets, suspected as Shabu and paid 500, which was mark money. After the transaction, the two police officers immediately arrested and virtually uh, searched suspect and yielded 500 grams of marijuana. What are the crimes committed here? Actually, there are two crimes. One is selling, the other one is possession. The selling here is in flagrante delicto arrest or caught in the act arrest. And the possession is the result of search incident to a lawful arrest. So there are two crimes, selling and possession. Dennis was caught in the act of, act, in the act of smoking marijuana. Since Dennis did not consume, take note, did not consume entirely the drug, the printing officer was able to seize from him partially burned marijuana. Dennis was found to be positive for use of dangerous drugs after the complementary test. What was the crime committed? So it is only possession. Okay? It's only possession. Why? Because he was um, recovered. Oh, there was recovered marijuana from him, partially born marijuana. So that is possession. It's only one crime. You cannot um, mix possession and using. So different kinds of drugs and its effects. Well, you have their hallucinogens. Hallucinogens, these are drugs that affect one senses. Self-awareness, emotion, and one's ability to think properly. So, from the word hallucination, mag ka. Uh, awareness, emotion, ability. So, what are the common hallucinogenic drugs? We have MDMA or this is what we call ecstasy. We have LSD or lysergic acid diethylamide. We have miscaline and of course, the most common is marijuana, hallucinogens. Then you have narcotics, this group, drugs, substances that dull the senses and are thus often induced sleep. So, it will induce sleep no? and relieve pain. So, what are the examples of this? Opium, heroin, codeine, and morphine. Okay, then you have the stimulants. Stimulants, these are drug enhance users' mental and physical condition by improving alertness and stamina. Uh, so, the most common of this is caffeine and cocaine. And of course, shabu. It will keep you awake. Uh, the stimulant, it will give you alertness and stamina. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you and good luck to your exam.